for Foreign Affairs, the Deputy High Commission of India, Lady Mayor, and other respected and distinguished guests, <coughs> Amir Sahib, Molana Sahiban, all of my dear brothers and sisters, and every single one of us who attends this session is a guest of the Promised Messiah and most distinguished and honored guest as such. My greetings of peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah ta'ala wa barakatuh. I would like to say at the outset that these were very warm and kind invitations from the distinguished and honorable guest, Dr. Boulel, to visit Mauritius and see every part of the island, how it lives in harmony and peace and is a prosperous and progressive nation as a result. I would say in response that well before coming to Mauritius, I already knew this. And as I mentioned yesterday in my opening address, coming here for me was one of a dream that I had for many years coming true. For in the course of my life as a student in Pakistan and then after in different parts of the world, I have been meeting many people from this lovely island nation of Mauritius as a student, as a servant of this community. And on each and every meeting of these individuals, I always wondered what it was, as we say in our parlance, that made them tick. What made them special? What is it about these individuals, no matter who I met, you know, there were men, women, children that had this loving spirit about them, this way, this harmonious and sweet way in voice and style and spirit that always captivated me and made me want to come and visit their land. I'm here at last and I'm in just four days being reaffirmed and reinforced in my previous thoughts and convictions that indeed, as I say, I know this is a harmonious, harmonious and blessed and peaceful land. Of course, we are not just citizens of an island nation. We are citizens of the world. And as we say, this is our global village in which we are living. Many Mauritians do not live here any longer. They are living in Europe, in Asia, in the Americas, and the United States of America. And thus they are affected by conditions and circumstances around them, which perhaps you don't experience on a daily basis. But let's extend ourselves for a moment today, and just perhaps as an exercise, if nothing else, how we are 
to live and make this world a better place. The Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the messenger of Islam, once addressed his companions and he mentioned to them a story. And he said, imagine if you're traveling in a boat and there are two levels, a higher level and a lower level, two compartments. And the people on the lower compartment, lower level, have no access to going on top and gaining water. So they send a message above to the people on the, on the upper level, can we just put a hole in the bottom of the boat so we can draw some water? Imagine if we were the people on the upper level and the message is coming now up to us. Can we just put a hole in these lower levels so that we can all draw some water? Of course, it doesn't take a wise man or woman to know the answer is a resounding no. As he said, that would be fatal mistake for all of us to allow those individuals, even if they have the need, to put a hole in the bottom of the boat. Today in this world, that's where we stand. We are citizens of a world in which someone must begin to use wisdom that is of the ages, that applies to everyone, and is not self-centered or self-focused, but thinks about the collective thinks about the whole, thinks about the future consequences. In this respect, today I just wanted to offer a common message, a common mission that all of us should carry because it comes from universal sources. It's called the Golden Rule. The golden rule. A friend of mine, when I say this, he's a financial officer, he says, well, I know what the golden rule means. It means whoever has the gold in the world is going to rule. And of course, it sounds a bit humorous, but in fact, the reality is in front of us right now. Nations have forgotten principles that might is not always right and that everything that glitters is not gold. And yet the rules that we have learned in our own courses of human history from the messengers who appear teach us about the golden rule, the positive form of it and the negative form of it. And both are equally valid and important to learn. The positive form of the golden rule one should treat others as one would like others to treat oneself. Very simple. I always want good, and so I should always give good. The negative form, and this is not negative in a bad way, it's the reverse of this. One should not treat others in ways that one would not like to be treated. Very simple rules. You can tell this to a child going to grade school, starting out the door, that don't slap anybody because they'll fight back. Don't say something bad because they'll abuse you back. As the prophet once said again to his followers, has anyone here today abused their mother or father? Has anyone sitting here today abused their mother or father? The companions were surprised, and they said, of course, O oh messenger of God, we would never abuse our mothers or fathers. And he said, no, no, it's not like this. You don't abuse your mother and father. You will abuse someone else's mother or someone else's father, with the result will be they, in turn, will abuse your mother and your father. In effect, you have abused your own parents by saying this about others. Thus the Quran tells us, do not even revel, speak ill of the gods or concepts of gods of other faiths 
because they'll turn around and start abusing Allah and your God, and you will not like that. And as Musa Tawjusa has already told us, this has led to so much reaction, rioting, and rebellion in this world by people abusing the one we love, Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. This is all part of the golden rule. It means that we have to try to live according to this rule, to empathize with other people, including those who may be very different from us. Now again, this is my first trip to Mauritius. There's no way in four days I can understand this diverse and dynamic nation. I don't know yet what makes you tick. I'm still learning. It's, it's a wonderful tick, though, believe me. I don't know what causes you to be angered or displeased or distressed, but I know what causes me pain. I know what causes me to feel upset and distressed and somewhat disturbed by things people will say or do. This much I can empathize with anyone in this room. I won't do that to you, which I know I and myself don't like. And this is the beginning of empathy. I cannot step in your shoes. I've heard this expression so many times. Let's walk in the other person's shoes. I cannot do that. And most of you here can't walk in my shoes, but I'm six foot seven, and my, my shoes are size 15. It won't work. One step in, the next step will come right out. But I can ask you to just try and imagine what you wouldn't like done to you and start from there, and then we can move forward. Now, what is beautiful about this golden rule, it cuts across all of the nations of the world, all of the countries, and all the faith communities. It's, it's there in every tradition you'll find. It's universal. And so today, I'm not speaking to you so, so much as a member of a faith. Again, I'm speaking as a citizen of the world. And our common heritage, if we'll just remember that common heritage, to give you an example of this teaching, which is found everywhere in the Bible, the Old Testament, in Leviticus, the book which the Jewish people will honor, it says, again, I quote, do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against anyone among your people but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord, the word from God. So here the first message is among yourself, treat each other as loving neighbors. Again, further in this same scripture, when a foreigner resides among you, so now when I come to you as a non-Mauritian individual, how does Leviticus say you should treat me if you believe in the scripture. When a foreigner resides among you in your land, do not mistreat them. You're all very good Jews because you're following the Jewish law beautifully for four days. You've treated me very well and no one, no one has mistreated me. It says the foreigner residing among you must be treated as your native born. Love them as yourself, for you were foreigners in Egypt. Many of you have come from different lands and have resided here and found a beautiful home. So it's talking about that transition from one place to another. And don't forget the past. We came from elsewhere. Again, in the New Testament, the scripture of the Christians, quote, in Matthew chapter 7, verse 12, so in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. <laughs> Going forward to Buddhism, again, Lord Buddha said, hurt not others in ways that you yourself would find hurtful. And lastly, looking at the Hindu scriptures in Mahabharata, it says, one should never do that to another which one regards as injurious 
to one's own self. This in brief is the rule of dharma. Other behavior is due to selfish desires. Listen to the harmony in all these words and we'll begin to realize that indeed we are citizens of one world and one tradition for the most part. You may say it in different forms, you may express it in different words, you may quote it in different passages, but the message underlying all of them is the same. The golden rule. The question you may ask then, and why? Why right now a citizen living in America who's Mauritian may call home tomorrow and say, do you realize that someone who's Christian attacked a Jewish synagogue? Or someone living in Burma may call home and say, do you realize that someone who's Buddhist tried to attack a Muslim man or woman? Or someone living somewhere in Europe Ireland may say, do you realize that someone who is Catholic had just attacked someone who's Protestant and they both were Christians? Or someone living in the Middle East will say, my God, what happened? The Sunni is killing the Shia, the Shia is retaliating killing the Wahhabi, the Wahhabi is killing the Deobandi and they're all killing each other. There's a bloodbath everywhere and they all say, La ilaha illallah, we love God with our heart and our soul, and we follow this tradition of peace, shalom, shanti, assalamu alaikum. What happens is the question. This is the only thing we have to reflect upon today, because if we're not careful, what happens is you begin to forget. The message of the Holy Quran recited in the beginning of this session was, and never be like those who forget God and God's words. The result will be they'll forget and lose their own selves. And these are the ones who will end up in complete ruin and disorder. I'm sorry to say, as a citizen of the world, I've seen this much too much. And I'm coming here and asking God Almighty and praying along with you, this will never be the Mauritius that you have lived, that I've experienced through some individuals, and that I know all of us want to maintain in this beautiful land. And not only that now, I'm praying that somehow this spirit, this island will grow and become the world and it will encompass all of us. In the end, I share with you the Islamic teaching right from the Holy Quran. In chapter 16, verse 91, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty says, Inna Allah ya'muru bil adli wal isani wal ita'i dil qurba wa yanha an al fahsha wal munqari wal baqi ya'idukum na'allukum tadhakkurum Verily, Allah enjoins justice and the doing of good to others and giving as if you are treating them like kindred. And he forbids indecency <coughs> and manifest evil and wrongful transgression. He admonished you that you may take heed. Now, every Muslim in this audience will know, will recognize these words. Every single Friday, every single sermon throughout the world includes these verses of the Holy Quran. It is a weekly reminder of the golden rule. Treat everyone with justice and kindness and compassion. And it starts by saying the very basic rule is to do to the other what they've done to you. And the maximum we have to take in recourse to some wrong is the wrong done to us. You call this the eye for the eye, the tooth for the tooth. That's the maximum we can do. Once the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was telling a story about a prophet who was bitten by an ant. 
He was bitten by an ant. His companions saw this and went and burned the entire ant colony down. And then God revealed to that prophet, would not the killing of one ant suffice? You were bitten by one ant. Why did you have to kill the entire colony? This is a creature of God. They have done nothing wrong to you. And this is going beyond justice. This was going beyond, he broke my tooth, I will break all of his. He put my eye out, I will make him blind, and his entire family blind. And it goes on and on. He took one of my life, and now his revenge killing for years after years after years, and you see this all throughout the world. The next level, however, is even greater. It's called Isan. Isan means that as Muslims, even when someone does us good, we're to do more good in return. And when someone has done us some wrong, we reciprocate by doing good, not seeking revenge or retaliation. A very high moral order that we're called to as Muslims and presented here in the Quran to the world. Again, if this is applied, the wars would end. Because after the first strike, there will be no second strike. There will be no retaliatory effort on the part of that person that was wrong. And the Bible says, slap one cheek, turn and give the other one. Uh, if you have Christian friends, don't try this at home, please. Trust me, it's a good, good teaching. Let it be. It means this, if someone does you wrong, try to be compassionate. Try to be forgiving. There was an occasion when the Prophet Muhammad, again walking through the streets of Mecca, would always be abused by this one old lady. Every day he would walk past her house, she would throw abuse on him verbally and physically. All the last night's garbage, she would collect it, waiting for him to come. And this is Mecca, this is not Mauritius, this is a very clean place. You, uh, you've done quite well in the streets here, I've driven around, wonderful place. That is filth, that's the intestines of animals, that's the rubbish of the streets, she's collecting. And every day he would pass by, he, he, she would take it and greet him, oh liar, oh false prophet, and throw this on him. It went on for a long period of time until one day there was silence, and no word came from that house, and no filth came from that house. And he wondered why this lady wasn't greeting him. Something must be wrong. He inquired from a neighbor about the old lady and learned that she was ill in the house, laying in bed. He then went straight to the house and knocked on the door and announced himself. And she heard the voice and she was shaking inside, thinking, he's come to take his revenge at last while I'm laying here weak and I can't respond. And didn't want to open the door, but he knocked gently and calmly said, it is me, Muhammad. So she led him inside. And she said, I know why you're here today. You have come to take revenge for all the abuse, all the filth I've thrown upon you these, these months and years. Do your worst. And he said, no. I've not come here to take revenge or to take advantage of your weakness. My faith and my God teaches me to go visit the ill whether they are Muslim or not, and to look after their needs, I've come to inquire about your health and see if you need anything, how I can service you in this condition. That old woman couldn't believe her ears. Her heart was so struck because every day after that he would go and visit her and minister her until she finally got back on her feet. This is a humanity that when someone does you wrong, you treat them with love and kindness. Or as I say, you love your neighbor and pray for your enemies. Universal teachings. I must end now, but it cannot end unless I try to share just a few words from the founder of this community who appeared in this age to rekindle lost values to redirect us toward these universal teachings and the teachings of Islam, and to revive that which is dying before our eyes, 
the beautiful faith of Prophet Muhammad and his ways and his own style. Hazrat Ahmed Islam, the Messiah of this age, the founder of our community, he said these two things. Quote, it is our principle to have sympathy for the whole of mankind. If a person sees that fire has broken out in the house of a Hindu, and he does not get up to help put it out, I tell you truly that he is not of my community. If one of my followers sees a Christian being killed, and he does not go to rescue him, I tell you very truly that he is not of me. I say it on oath and in truth that I have no enmity with any people. Again, in the final comment which he has made, which I'll share with you, quote, have mercy. Have mercy on God's creation. Do not be cruel to them with your speech, nor your hands, nor any design. Endeavor for the prosperity of God's creation. Do not be arrogant to anyone, even if he is your subordinate. Do not use foul language against anyone, even if he swears and abuses you. Become meek like the poor, forbearing, and of pure intentions. Be sympathetic towards God's creation so that you may be worthy of his acceptance. These are the words of the founder of our community, and these are the words which resonate with all of the traditions and teachings that we've learned in the course of human history. This is what, again, I hope on this day and every day, we as Muslims sitting here, as Hindus sitting here, Christians, Jews, people of any faith and those of no faith, but understand humanity, will keep this in mind. God has told us very clearly that this is the only way that we will find peace in this world. He says, all my servants who have committed wrong, remember one thing, follow the best teaching that has been revealed to you. Follow the best teaching that has been revealed to you. My starting point as a citizen of the world, of course, is not to say to a Christian, you must first be a Muslim. I want to say to a Christian, be a good Christian first and love your neighbor. And to a Jew, be a good neighbor to your other neighbor and who is a member or a foreigner. I want to say to the Hindu, don't forget your message of prayer and peace is shanti for the whole creation. Be at peace as a Hindu with the whole world. And to our Muslim brothers and sisters here and throughout the world, be a true representative of Prophet Muhammad and a true follower of the teachings of Islam. Then, and only then, will this be a world of peace. And that's the day I'm waiting for so my boat will reach its final destination and I will enjoy that ride along with everyone else in this world, in this generations, and for generations to come. May God bless us all, help us all, and guide us all to be the best that we can be in following these traditions. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.